Um, hi, I'm Sam Yamshan from NYU Langone, and I'm here with Dr. Andrew Evans uh, from Rutgers. We're here at ASH to talk about some lymphoma. Dr. Evans. It's really exciting to be here. Andy Evans, uh, Deputy Director and Chief Physician Officer at the Rutgers Cancer Institute and the Jack and Shirley Morris Cancer Center. And I apologize, number one, Sam, is I'm not wearing a coat. As you know, sunny Florida is not so sunny tonight drenching rain, but I think we'll get through it. Yeah, we're getting through it. And I've got a slightly wet jacket myself, but we're powering through. So just wanted to, um, you know, ask you some questions. Uh, you know, one one piece of data that we've seen a bit of at this ash has been about CAR NK cells. And there are some potential advantages potentially of CAR NK, off the shelf capabilities, potentially reduced toxicity. Where do you see CAR NK cells fitting in, uh, maybe in the next few two to three years potentially? And and if 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 you think they might, what what type of diseases do you think they might be good in? Yeah, that's that's uh, we're always excited for new novel cellular therapy. I would say number one, it's early, like we need to kind of see some of the data. But there is really number two, exciting preclinical data and some early clinical data, uh, mainly on the off-the-shelf therapy, a little different than our uh, commercial CD19 CAR T-cell therapy that's off-the-shelf. But as you know, there's off-the-shelf, there's commercial in terms of making it autologous on bicars, tricars. But what's really interesting about NK cells, and I used to have a laboratory, I, I had shut it down around the pandemic and got an MBA, but instead, but Actually, I had studied a lot of natural killer cells because think about it, the natural body. You know, if you or I, God forbid, had an infection tonight or anybody had cancer, what's the first cell to that infection or cancer? It's not T cells, it's natural killer cells. That's kind of the infantry, the Marines of our immune system. And in terms of fighting not just infections, but cancer. So it certainly makes a lot of biologic sense. Now it's just translating it to clinical. Could we be in a future world once we get safe and effective NK cells? It'd be great if they work alone, but in some sequence, smart biologic combination of off-the-shelf NK cells followed by T cells and whatever else makes sense. So early, but really interesting preclinical data and some early clinical data. So I'm very, very hopeful, but we have a lot more work to do. Yeah, that's that's very fair. And I, I think the field is just evolving so quickly. There's so many different products out there. It's going to be interesting to see who's the winner over, over, over the next few years. Um, I do want to toss another question kind of right into your wheelhouse. So in the last couple of years, we've seen some very exciting frontline Hodgkin data, you know, a, a S1826, Nevo AVD in the frontline, which has obviously shown both impressive efficacy and safety, as well as, you know, from our European colleagues, uh, the BRICAD regimen. Um, and so, we, you know, it's an exciting time in Hodgkin lymphoma, but we are still doing some, you know, drug development with these novel agents. Do you see a potential role for these novel agents and how can they fit in where we have thankfully, such good regimens all in the front line. I do, is the quick answer. Uh, but you nailed it on the head. There were two really pivotal, and I dare say landmark clinical trials published last year. First, the HD21 study from the German Hodgkin study group was published in The Lancet last year. That was using BRICAD, which was substituting brentuximab vodotin and some other smart substitutions versus the typical BIACOP that they have developed over the last couple of decades. Uh, so that was one important thing about HD21 clinical file. The second is it was still response adapted. And what's really important about that is we know pets maybe aren't as predictive as we thought, but in that trial, if you were PET2 negative, negative meaning Dovil 3 less in the liver, then patients only received two more cycles. And this is advanced stage disease. Yeah. And that was two thirds of patients. So in other words, two thirds of patients received only four cycles of BRICAD. Now, if you're PET2 positive, you received more cycles. But at the end of the day, when you put it all together, it was a progression-free survival at four years. And now they published or presented five years at the meeting of 93, 94% for advanced stage disease. We're curing more than 90%. So that was HD21. S1826 followed a couple months later, published in the New England Journal. Lead author was Alex Herrera from City of Hope. Uh, senior author Jonathan Friedberg. I was lucky to be the the ECOG national champion on that study. And that was different. We've used, as you know, Sam, more of an ABVD backbone in the United States, North America, and, and other places in the world. So it was bringing 
checkpoint immunotherapy, in particular nivolumab, nivolavd, compared to what at the time we designed a study in 2018, 2019 was bretuximab vedotin AVD. And the long story short, nivolavd was not only more effective with a two-year progression-free survival of 92%, it was also largely safer, or I should say more tolerable in terms of side effects. And so, yes, so those, now they're there. And now the obvious question, which you, you piled into that important question is what's next? And I'm really hopeful our pharmaceutical partners will continue to invest in Hodgkin lymphoma. Yes, we're curing 92%, but as you know, the vast majority of these patients, Sam, are in their 20s and 30s. They're going to live another 40, 50 years, and there still are significant post-acute and late effects. And we don't know the late effects to checkpoints or brintuxum evidone. Are there new things that'll thyroid and other endocrine issues that'll pop up? So we would love to have a world in the near future where great we're now curing Hodgkin's, at least with Nevo AVD, with three chemotherapies and a checkpoint. Let's bring down the alkylator. God forbid, let's bring down the anthracycline. So I'm hopeful, whether it's CD30, CAR T cell, or other checkpoint inhibitors, there's a lot of work still to do. Because the last thing I'll say in terms of unmet need, we say, oh, great, you're curing 92, 94%. If you actually look at it as lost productivity, et cetera, there's still young patients dying due to this disease and having significant morbidity, it's one of the worst of all cancers still. So we're really happy. We're really fortunate to improve the standard of care, but we have work to do. That's right. Well, thank you very much for your insightful comments as always. And, uh, you know, still work to do, as you say. So thanks for, thanks for sharing with us. Good to work with you. Always a pleasure.